Hey Screencast Ninjas, Lon Naylor here, and in this quick project walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to do this cheeky little pattern interrupt effect. Before we get started, I'm actually going to show you a little bit about how this came about, because it's kind of an interesting way to find some content and some ideas. This little deal comes to us by a PowerPoint. And a little trick for you, if you go into PowerPoint and go to create a new presentation, in the search item here, if you type in the word animated, what you'll find from the Microsoft site is all kinds of examples of people that have used animations in their PowerPoint presentations. And the one that I picked for this particular project is called Sparkle. So if you'd like to grab it and use it as part of your video slide content also, it's a good little template. Then you can use this effect inside of PowerPoint also. It's just a one slide template. I've added a couple extras here to play with, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So it just does that nice little sparkle effect. And if we click on one of the stars here and go to the Animations tab and Animation Pane, you can actually copy these effects and use them for any animation that you want to kind of look like that. For our project, what I did was I just copied it and pasted the image into a new slide. Since I'm going to animate it in Camtasia, all I really wanted to get out of this is just the image itself. So I'll click on it, right click, and Save as Picture. I'll give it a name. And be sure to save it as a PNG file. So to get started over in Camtasia, I'm just going to find that file and import it in my clip bin. And I'm also going to grab just a demo image here. But keep in mind that this little effect can be applied on an image, on a video, on text that's on the screen, pretty much anything. So I'll just use this for demonstration purposes and add this to the timeline. Let's go ahead and stretch this guy out a bit and zoom in on the timeline a bit. And on top of that, let's move the playhead in and add the sparkle image. So with the sparkle image selected, I can go ahead and kind of move it to where I want the effect to end up. And I'll probably look at resizing this. And first thing you might notice here is that things are going to start to get a little small and hard to work with here. So I am going to click in the preview window and use the mouse wheel to zoom in so I can get a little bit more detail here. Click on the image again. And now, even though it's small, I can kind of move it to where I want it to end up. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you think about it, the actual sparkle image here is actually the end of the animation effect that I want. So, let's go to the More tab and Visual Properties and configure our beginning size, position, and state. Essentially, what I want to have happen is that this starts from nothing, twirls and spins, gets big, and then goes away. So let's configure our beginning state by just taking the scale button all the way down to nothing. Now I'll go ahead and move the playhead in just a bit. We need to click the Add Animation button and bring the scale back up to about the right size. And for the effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the little rotation handle here and just spin this guy around a couple of times. That will add that motion to the zoom animation and it all just kind of happened at the same time. So let's move the playhead to the beginning and see what that looks like. Here's another tip is that if I go ahead and move through here, what you'll notice is that during the preview, I get all these resize handles and stuff. Well, it kind of messes up my preview, so just click anywhere off the object, and now I can get a much better preview. So that configures the animation, and just like any other animation, let's zoom in just a little bit more here. 
I can also work with the duration. So for this to come off properly, I'll generally make it pretty darn quick. What you might also notice there is that it comes in, but then it stays. Now, certainly I could go ahead and add another animation at this point to take it out, but I found an even easier way. So I'm going to shorten this up, and instead of adding an animation, which just gives us more complexity, I'm just going to go back to the More tab, Transitions, and add me just a fade out. And I'm going to make it really fast. We'll scooch the animation over so that the two kind of combine and meet. And what we'll start to see is that it's kind of getting there. Right? Super simple, super easy, and that's kind of the way we like it. In fact, I'll probably even scooch this in a little bit just to make it nice and short and simple. One of the other things I did was I added the little sound effect deal. This is just a small little sound effect I found on freesounds.org. So I'll go ahead and drop that on the timeline. Now, I don't use this for all of the sparkle effects, but in this particular case, I thought it was kind of appropriate. Right? So once I've configured all this, I'm going to go ahead and add it to my library so you guys can go ahead and download it. Let me get rid of the sample track. And I'm just going to start at the beginning, highlight, and in fact, I think what I'll do is maybe chop this sound effect down a little bit. I want it to resonate. I want the ring. But that's long enough. So let's highlight this. We'll right click and add playhead selection to library. I'll rename it. And I'll also create a version without the sound effect just so you can have them both to use. That's basically how you create it from scratch. But there are a couple of things I need to cover if you're going to pull them out of your library. So let's talk about that. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. We'll go back to the clip bin, put my sample image back on, and start to check some of the things you'll need to know out. Let's go ahead and grab this from the library and try it again. Right click, add to timeline at playhead, and the secret to moving this to where you want it is to basically take your playhead and scrub until you see the sparkle. Now, to move it, here's a little ninja trick. You have to put your crosshairs right on top of the image. Click, and then move. I'll undo that and show you what happens if you don't click in the right spot. Notice how it grabbed the underlying image instead. You seriously have to get right on top of the sparkle image itself. Then you can move it and everything should work the way it's supposed to. So there you have it. Just a fun, quick little animation effect. Again, you can put this on top of video clips. You can put it on top of text or pretty much anything you want. So that's it for now. Have fun and enjoy. Enjoy.